Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast. Happy Tuesday. It's Jack's co host, Week Flamingos, are here because Shannon Ford is in studio with Yar Girl. You are the first guest to come to my Florida studio. The first guest with the Mingos? The first guest with the Mingos, which is very exciting for the Mingos. They've never met anyone new. That is exciting. Exciting for me to really make this a real studio. I would say I would say I like, you know, got it all ready for you. But the last 24 hours have really been a clusterfuck around here. And I would say in your life, the last seven days has just been really something. Really something. So for those of us watching on YouTube and also everyone's been following along on your journey and I feel like you know, you can't be a internet user without talking about Shannon's hematoma. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's hemagate. Hemagate. It's hemagate. And I actually have makeup on it, but you can still definitely see the giant bruise on the side of my face. So please, for those who know a little bit and or those who don't know and are just watching and are saying like, what happened to Shannon? Can you tell us what happened to Shannon? Yeah, I can tell you what happened to Manon. Um, so first of all, thank you for having me in your home as well. It's stunning. We're having gorgeous. a great time. We're having a great time. Other, we'll, we'll get to it. Other. We, there's been so much trauma. It's never a dull moment. And you got here yesterday morning, like bright and early. Yeah, yeah. So we had the whole day together yesterday. We were having girly swirly good time. But the rest of the story is related to hematoma gate. So please take so, it from the top. I'll take it from the top. So I go in for a routine cavity filling. No big deal at when all. When was this? On Wednesday. Okay. I go in, I get a cavity filled. You know, I'm doing the adult thing. You find out you have a cavity. God forbid, you know, let's get it filled. Nice and easy. And actually the dentist that came in is not my usual dentist. She was like a young, gorgeous girl. I didn't think anything of it. You know what I mean? Like everyone is capable of filling a cavity of course right so um then i get my cavity filled it was the most like lovely experience it actually was pretty quick um again the dentist office is great and so it was it was very routine and quick but when was i got your same practice just a new doctor, doctor yeah okay. and so when i got my um shot of novocaine because i'm a redhead and you'll get this mm -hmm. she was like you're a natural redhead do you normally need a little bit more novocaine because very random and weird thing about redheads we require more anesthesia um there's something about a like mutated gene inside of us whatever when i got my appendix taken out they gave me more anesthesia the whole nine yards wisdom teeth same thing so i was like yeah so she went in with the second shot of novocaine which this is why it wasn't painful to me at all because i was already numbed but the second shot of novocaine she gave me actually fun little thing it hit an artery so when that happens which um i'll go ahead and put this out here now i've spoken to like so many dentists like three very very experienced like well like you know well-known dentists and they're like this can happen like this is like a freak accident but it can happen in the world of dentistry it just like doesn't like it might happen like once in a dentist career this but like was her time this was her time and my she time to shine <laughs> she she saw it happen for her first time and my first time today uh that day so yeah anyways it basically instantly gave me what we now know to be as a hematoma um the swelling has gone down a ton uh we, it was like a golf ball it was a golf there. ball in my mouth and then it didn't bruise right away but when i went back in the next day and spoke to you know both dentists at the practice they were like oh my gosh like this is so rare i'm like that's me rare rare <laughs> so um they're like but yeah you have hematoma so anyways i was like super quick i have a huge show coming up on saturday always plug guys if you're in nashville and you want to come to my show at the nashville comedy fest it's saturday at 4 p.m a comedy queen a comedy i'm queen? so used to hosting with a comedian oh so you know what great. women in comedy love uh, that show but i uh yeah i have this big show coming up so i was like so the swelling will be down by then right and they were like right the swelling should be down which they're correct it's still a little swollen but not anything unmanageable but she was like i'm gonna be completely upfront and honest with you your bruise is only gonna get like worse and i was like really and then yeah as the time has gone on i just have this massive bruise on my face so i am just you know a medical anomaly and hematoma it is nice that i'm kind of someone that can just laugh about it because it is so insane that i just have this massive hematoma on the side of my face no i would be so enraged you also explained like the technique like for injecting like she did kind of skip a step like she should have aerated to see if there was blood allegedly you're supposed to aspirate the needle to yeah, like what, see if you can what did i say aerate, aerate. <laughs> you're I, like supposed, I don't know maybe that it's one's medical too. it's the university of we're Jax. doctors so <laughs> the toast doctors uh but yeah we i mean yeah everyone that i did talk to it was comforting because you know when something like this happens you just want to immediately place blame and mm -hmm. all the dentists i talked to are like look she this is not discredit anything she's done i was like okay okay because you know in this moment you want to find someone to blame and they're like you're supposed to aspirate but like it is like just one of those things that could so rarely weirdly happen and it happened to you 
And my best friend was like, I almost said, I can't believe you're getting dental work before your show, the week before your show. But I just thought you might have say like, it was just a routine feeling. And I'm like, I would have said that. I would, I have would said. never have thought that. How's your cavity though? The cat, again, I great. went back in the next Teeth day. look great. And me put like people pleasers, like stamp, like stamp it on my face. Cause I went in the next day and I was so worried the dentist was gonna think I was like attacking her or something. So I was like, by the way, best feeling I've ever had in my life. Like, oh. I was like, you You're did too a nice. fantastic job. And she was like, okay. Um, but it, yeah, the, the cavity's fine. The filling's great. Everything's, you know, looking good, except for everything else. Except for everything else. Well, not to make it about me, but I've been with you like all day and you know, we've run into people and I've heard this story a few times now. Mm -hmm. and, like, seriously like I feel faint every like every time you say like the needle hit the artery like yeah. oh I'm woozy I can't I seriously can't even imagine like I I seriously feel for you well when you describe a hematoma which I never knew what that was me it's, neither everyone's like Shannon has a hematoma I'm like yeah. how do you guys all know what that is, yeah, I, what what is, that it? is. I didn't I didn't but it's basically like a pool of blood so when the needle hit the artery it pulled blood in my cheek creating a hematoma and then your your body naturally swells instantly to like protect you oh my god so I'm like that grosses me out too I'm like oh just a pool of blood in my cheek Blah. like ooh. oh it's seriously dizzying and I'm not someone who's faint of heart for like needles or blood mm. like I'm not skittish or anything but like every time you describe it I I, I have a, a full body reaction yeah it is also like painful so like that's not fun right but you know what this taught me and maybe if you guys are any toasters that are getting married soon I thought to myself oh my gosh this show yes is this weekend and I'm gonna have a giant bruise on my face but at least the show is like it's not a you know beauty pageant at least it's and the show will go on the show will go on and I can make a joke about it you know what I mean right. this is good news but like I'm getting married this year and what if I would have just been like doing the right thing before heading off to my wedding and being like oh I'm gonna go get my cavity filled so I have like a really enjoyable weekend without any kind of you know tooth pain and then that would have happened so like you know just really cavity fillings can sometimes not be as routine as you think it's a great lesson to learn. I always ignore my cavities. I ignore all of my dental issues and I'm gonna continue to do so. Yeah, I just I just said next time I'm just gonna be like, pull it. Just I feel pull it. justified in, in ignoring in ignoring everything yeah. that's going on. Like my teeth always, they'll sometimes hurt and I'm like, it's time for cleaning. Yeah, yeah. That's like my my spidey signal. My spidey signals are saying I might need a root canal. Yeah. I should go in. And now I'm gonna be a little more careful about where I go to the dentist because I was getting a little willy-nilly there especially since I just moved I don't have a dentist down here yeah and I only went once and I I kind of just like went right you know, in the shopping center in the shopping wow okay that's a bit rogue yeah yeah uh no <laughs> like, so, so yeah not I'm just gonna you know double I, check I think it's like anything in life and again I just like don't want to completely like trash anyone's name because the practice is lovely and everyone's lovely like you hear of everything you can get a pedicure and you hear of some strange Infe person, fungal infection fungal infection from a routine pedicure and like god knows I, i'll get a pedicure anywhere oh my mm -hmm. god if you, like if a man on the side of the street was like i sell water soda and give pedicures i'd be like you okay rub. yeah i'll do it sure yeah. like and so anything can happen anywhere it's just one of those moments where you're like oh my god but me to me why yeah so so then the second half of the drama, yes. things like things were at bay with hematoma. Hematoma gate was relaxing. I was she less was quiet. She was she was quieting down. Everything was okay. I'm at Jack's house. We're having a lovely time. Um, I really had like the most beautiful night yesterday with everyone. Liv came over. We just had a great time. Yeah. And then around like like nighttime, it was just me, you, and Zach, and we were hanging around the dinner table. And I thought I had eaten. We were eating some gorgeous chips and guac. Salty chips. Salty chips, and I thought the chip might have nicked like the corner of my mouth because I was like, "Ow, the corner of my mouth hurts." And then I was like, "Weird." And then I went to bed. Other then, side of your mouth, by uh, the way. The other side, not not the side, hematoma side, not the side with the hematoma. <laughs> so I go to sleep. I obviously don't like cause a ruckus about maybe cutting the inside of my you know lip with the salty chip. And then I wake up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and I'm like, "Oh my god, my lip hurts so bad." And then. And then I go back to sleep. I put some like Aquaphor on it. I go back to sleep. I wake up, you guys. The entire, again, other side of my mouth is covered in this like giant painful rash. And I'm like, excuse my French, if you have children in the car, what the fuck is going on? I'm also in someone else's home, you know? I'm in someone else's home that has children, young children. And I call my dermatologist. Thank God she answered. She was wonderful. And she's like, okay, so probably just a case of dermatitis, which is just stands for like rash, you know, irritated skin. And I'm like, right, right, right. But like pretty weird happened instantly overnight. She goes, so I am going to say just super quick, it could be shingles. And I was like, e no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And then I call a couple other friends who are doctors. My sister-in-law's doctor. Everyone is like, so 
could be shingles. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I do what I have to do. And I like from the, you know, upstairs. Upstairs, yeah, I came banister. out. I'm like, we're having breakfast. I see Shannon at the top of the stairs, like Rapunzel. She's like, uh, not coming down. Explains to me the situation. We're like shouting across the house and she's worried <laughs> that she could have shingles, which could give the kids chicken pox. Right. So Shannon's now quarantined in my upstairs. Just sexy things. Just nursing her shingles. Um. So we've since talked to, I'll give you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't have any makeup on it. So you can really see just like this giant rash on the other side of my face. Um, everyone's and coming to the YouTube today. That's everyone's what I do. That's what I do know. They're like, we gotta see Shannon's face. They're like, face. first of all, the YouTube views were through the roof because uh, <laughs> Shannon's face is fucked. <laughs> I'm so busted. Um, also, you have to see Shannon's outfit. Like, could you seriously? No one's ever looked so nice on the toast, especially with the hematoma and dermatitis slash shingles. <laughs> slash shingles. We're having a bit of a shingle scare, which is like not sexy. And also I've thought like only old old people got shingles. Like my grandma is a nurse and she was at my mom's house when I FaceTimed her and she was like, oh no. And I was like, oh, Grams. Yeah. Where do you think I got shingles? We've since talked to a couple doctors who think maybe it's not shingles and it really is just dermatitis. I'm a medical mystery, guys. Um, I don't know. But the shingles, I think people thought maybe it could be because the hematoma has caused a lot of stress correct in that area right and that could be it should also be noted giving shingles it, it, it's first of all it's giving shingles <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's giving shingles um so so anyways i should note as well that to fix the hematoma or kind of like help it heal faster. The dentist recommended that I go to this like hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Oh God, this part of the story, this is where it gets really dark. Yeah, this is where maybe, this is maybe where the shingles stress came from because I went to this hyperbaric <laughs> oxygen chamber that cost me like $200, but everyone around me was like, that really will benefit you immensely. So I go and get in this like chamber thing and I bring my notes for my show that I have coming up on Saturday at the Tea Packet, 4 p.m. in Nashville. And where can everyone get tickets? Link in my bio on my Instagram, probably Shannon. But I, you're I, not gonna want to miss the show, you guys. <laughs> not gonna miss it's show. gonna be one for the ages. Um, so I bring my show notes, which are like written on p copy paper, of course, and I get into because I assume you can't bring electronics into this hyperbaric oxygen chamber. It sounds like something NASA has. And the woman that works here is so nice. She was like, "Oh, did you want to bring your phone in?" And I was like, "Oh, I didn't think I could." She was like, "Oh no, you can." So like that conversation happened. You know what I mean? Oh, I didn't think I could, and she said, "Yeah, of course you can." I get in the oxygen chamber, bada bing, bada boom. It pressurizes to the level, breaks my phone indefinitely. Phone is so broken that Apple says, we can't even, we'll give you, a, you'll buy a new phone. No, they didn't give it to me. I bought a $1,200 new phone and they were like, but we actually can't even activate it here. Like you have to go to Verizon. Your other phone is so broken. We can't transfer the SIM card. I'm like, perfect. So if this routine cavity filling has given me a broken phone, a hematoma and shingles, you know, that's but just my cross to bear. <laughs> at least your cavity's filled. At least I have great dental health. You do. You really have great teeth and they can't take that away from you. No one can take that away from me, but all my teeth are fake. So at this point, maybe I should just pull them all and just get like, you know, New a fake. set of dentures. You get a cavity and a fake tooth? Yeah, because my real tooth's still back there. It was a molar. You know, that's how the, that's also, it should be noted that it was a the cavity. If any, uh, toasters that are like dentists are listening to this it was my back molar so that's it is again way more common to have that happen to an artery when you're giving novocaine that far back so again to credit the the good doctor accidents happen got it freak accidents do happen so well your teeth really do look great so that is i've a got plus. a buick in my mouth so they better fucking look good <laughs> no literally claudia and i say like we'll never be true stars until we have fake teeth because we have we're just like rocking our kid teeth your kid teeth you and i feel like nobody smiles i feel like nobody who's like a big star has their real teeth still i disagree i think that people it is such a flex to have your actual real teeth and the sisterhood of y'all all have the same smile it would be a travesty if, yeah like, and then one of us like you would know you would know i just think real teeth are such a flex and are so beautiful and like i really wish looking back i like kind of would have just like rocked my real teeth i mean i'm really happy i have these gorgeous i have to Hollywood see a picture teeth. of your real teeth at some point okay i'll show you okay but yeah Nothing, nothing crazy was about them. But I, I think, I think having real teeth is like a cool thing. It gives character. Like I have no character to my teeth. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is like a set of dentures that you would like, like if you Googled like on clip art, like teeth, this would pop up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I do know what you mean. But the good news is that since Shingles Gate of this morning, we've talked to 
some more people. Mm-hmm. And I have to shout out again, HastyMeds.com because when Shannon thought that she had shingles, she called up Bracha from Hasty Meds and Bracha was going to get you all the medication that you yeah. needed for to treat your shingles. Instantly. And she was amazing. And honestly, it made me feel so comfortable on the phone. Like, you know, bedside manner is like not a requirement that doctors are like meant to have, but it's really nice when they do. And she really just put me at ease. Yeah. And then she also took a look too, and they had an on-staff dermatologist who uh-huh. said that they think it's more of a dermatitis slash sun poisoning because you were laying out in the sun right. yesterday while I was podcasting because we've been just, you've been in Florida for so long. Just been in Florida. So now we're treating it as if it's not, but TBD on the shing. TBD on the shing. It's You'll keep them posted? I'll keep you guys posted, but like it's giving shingles, it's not giving shingles, we don't know. Yeah, but I, I do, if I had to bet, like I would say it's not shingles and I feel comfortable with you coming out of quarantine. Like, I don't think you need to stay up here Are you all day. sure? Yeah, yeah. I could be Rapunzel if you want me to. No, it was literally, I was bringing Shen, like, leaving her coffee at the foot <laughs> of the stairs. Zach brought me Vaseline because we're just, like, putting Vaseline on it because it's, you know, like, feels like a very painful chapped lip kind of thing. And he, like, stuck it at the bottom of the stair and, like, kind of scurried away. I was like... Yeah, the good, the good news is that I'm sure a lot of people listening to this episode will have thoughts, like, professional thoughts. Yeah, drop a comment below of what you think's wrong with my face. Um... She was know. laying out in the sun. It, the sun is strong here. The sun is strong here. I checked the UV rays when I was out in the sun yesterday. It was a nine, but it should be noted that I did not have any sunscreen on and I was in the shade, in the sun, in the shade, in the sun, and I do not have any burn anywhere else on my body. But she was wearing aquaphor on her lips when she was in the sun. That is also true. So it's been a journey and I'm so glad that through all of it, like you're still here and we're still doing the toast because they're like this morning when you were like, I, <laughs> was like, I don't want to give you chicken pox. Have you ever had it? True. Um, I was like, oh, uh, like, can we even, I thought you were trying to say like, you couldn't even do the toast with me. I just, you never know. And I told my, I called my best friend and was like, oh, Jackie's being so cool because like, you never know, like you are a mama. You have to protect your babies. You have to protect yourself, your home, your family, brew. Even though the jury's out, it brewed, gave me this. Shannon time. started to blame brew for this. <laughs> he, I said, kissed him on the mouth a lot. She thinks that it's brew. Can you believe? I think it's brew. Brew slander and he can't even defend himself. I want to. I want someone to take accountability and I need to blame someone and it's brew. But brew loves you so much. A brew's he's obsessed so, with me. He's so happy that you're here. I'm obsessed with brew. Oh, I love that. Also, like this is a Redhead's only podcast right now. It is. Brew, Shannon, Jacks, Like Redhead's strong. I hope some young Redhead girl is watching this episode and like, realizing like it's really awesome to be a redhead yeah it is really awesome to be a redhead and yesterday when we were in the golf cart we were taking a little golf cart ride on our easy go um i was like people are probably looking at us being like look at those two sisters totally like, more so at- than when i'm out on the golf cart with my actual sister 100 yeah 100 percent. it's totally like i have a relative in town yeah everyone's like look at her like sister or cousin just visiting and just having good family time yeah it's so true it's we giving are like the- sister shingles it's giving sisterhood Sorry, Turdy. I know she's probably listening. We miss you, but we're having a great time. We do miss you, but we are having a fabulous time. It would be great if you were here too. It would be. It would be. But yeah, no, I try not, like I try to take everything, like all the drama and like not let myself get crazy. Like I don't think that solves anything. Like I try to be level-headed, like look at the facts. What do we know? Right. And yeah, plus you were upstairs all morning. It's actually worked out that you stayed up here. Yeah. True. So it was just very well within your right to like be like, you get it on a jet plane and you're gone home and I'm <laughs> calling Claude and she's coming out of the toast again. So I, you were very lovely and very kind to me oh in gosh. a time of turmoil. Thank you. Well, you're a lovely, kind and very helpful house guest. Oh, we cooked dinner together last night. We did. Man Shannon on the mashed potatoes. You were giving feminine Shannon though. Oh, except for when you opened my umbrella. That was <laughs> Manon. <laughs> that was, it's a huge umbrella. Costco. Like, like the, as it was opening, I thought this is crazy. Yeah. How does she? Why does she have two? Because we don't have any shade out there. So if we ever want to create like a shady area, I see. It's not just a, like a one person umbrella. It like shades the whole area. Right. Well, they were fantastic, but large. Shout out Costco, fantastic but large. That's their motto. I think it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a Costco girl? I I dip in and out. You know, I'm a member, and then I like my membership expires, and then I like can't believe I don't have membership. It's like it's like it's love hate it's no i just like forget about it and then i'm like who could possibly need a box of cheese it's that big like it's just me and james at home you know what i mean like i'm like this is crazy this is wasteful even and then like someone i'll see on instagram someone's like at costco and i'm like oh my gosh i've got to go to costco yeah i want to go to costco it's always instagram that reels you in yeah and then i go and like your membership's expired i'm like oh run it up yeah do it my sister olivia and her husband are like costco ambassadors yeah we dabble. It's we like do. Soho House to me. It's like you're like when you see someone's there and you're not there, you want to be there. Yeah. But then like when you have the membership, you're like, this isn't even that cool. 
literally so house yeah now that i've canceled i can finally say it <laughs> taylor just canceled late. hers too yeah like five years too late i haven't been in forever yep but i'm free you're free well, I'm so glad that you're here. And aside from the hematoma and the potential shingles, you have a lot going on in your life right now. Yeah. Bride to be. Bride to be. On fiance. On fiance. How's wedding planning going? Not to trigger you, but that would probably be my least favorite question um, on the planet. No, you know, it's fine. I'm honestly like, I don't have a wedding planner, which everyone is like aghast at that. But we're getting married in Positano, Italy, which is like really. I'm a brag. Listen, Italy. he's European. He moved to America for me. Yeah, he, like yeah. he, he's, but I, I was like, twist, least you could do. twist my arm. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'll get married in Italy. Um, but yeah, we. I've always wanted to get married in Italy, anyways. And then he was like, I love the idea. Whatever. It's you know, it's just crazy because for all of his friends and family, like our mine are like taking a week off of work, which is like very a daunting thing for me because I hate to like make people, make people spend money and like take a week off of work. But um, his friends are just coming in like the day of because it's a it's like a flight to Florida for them yeah you know it's so quick and easy because they all just live that's when you're European everything's just like a hop and a skip and a jump and a but train I'm hoping I'm not putting that much emphasis on like the the things around because like the atmosphere is going to be so beautiful right. the location so beautiful I like I'm not super stressed about the things that I feel like a lot of brides get really stressed about like material like, items yeah yeah like the napkins to this to that like um and also in america a lot of american weddings you have to you get like a grand space like a warehouse that you have to then make beautiful mm -hmm. and so there are so many things at play there whereas for me i'm like oh my god everyone just look around yeah <laughs> look around it's so pretty here and look we're in love and i just hope people feel the love of the day and i'm trying not to stress out too much about like you know, like nameplate settings and stuff like that. That, it seems like you have a pretty healthy attitude about it. How does it work when you're, do you have to speak Italian to vendors that you're working with? Does yeah. James speak Italian? I learned Italian this year too. No, I'm kidding. Oh my God. I was like, <laughs> she does it all. She opens no. the umbrella. She learns Italian. They all basically speak English that are like helping us out with stuff, but the time is what's hard. Like I actually zone. just got a text today from um, our, the, the venue. We're, ha we're having like a meeting with them about like something with to do with the venue and she was like so 4 p.m italian time 9 a.m your time and then they have an off season and so like it was off season in the winter when we were having a lot of conversations with them about stuff like reception and everything and they were all like visiting bali and places during their off season and we were james and i were like staying awake to like midnight one time we set an alarm to call someone at three in the morning to have a conversation with them because the only time they could talk was like nine their time it was that's like what's been difficult that's, yeah the that time zone difficult. But it's been fun and easy and not, not easy, but just like nice. Yeah, and, and you're enjoying yourself. It's yeah, exciting. I haven't gotten flustered or frustrated yet. And for those of you that do think I'm crazy, we do have a day of coordinator. So like the day of the wedding, we'll have someone like telling people where to go for cocktail hour and like helping with stuff. Beautiful. I just, yeah, I just took the reins and planned so much that by the time it was all said and done, I was like, do I even need a planner? Yeah, I feel like you're on top of things. Yeah. Your productivity levels are through the roof. That's like something that I really oh. admire about you. Thanks, Josh. I feel like I've said that to you so many times. Like, you just get shit done. Well, I don't have kids or a pet or but anything else. I feel the like the, you will still get shit done. I feel like you actually get more shit done when you have kids because I get so much shit done now when I that I have kids. But before I had kids, I was a lazy slob. <laughs> a lazy slob. I mean, sometimes I do get in like TikTok holes and I'll sit there for hours. Yeah. But okay, I like that. I accept. I accept the title of. Accept the compliment. I will. No caveats. No caveats. A productivity queen. Productivity queen. Love that. And then also, you have your podcast going on, which is very exciting. Yeah, I'm in a little break right now. Oh. So it's nice. Sometimes I get to a point where I'm talking so much. Well, you guys have a podcast every day, but sometimes I get into this like beep, 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 bop, bop. I have nothing to say. And so it's nice when you take a break because you come back like creatively refreshed and energized, and it's nice. So I. My podcast starts back in April. I feel the same when we do take a break. Like we have so much juice. Right, exactly. Yeah, and you have your new house. The house is housing. The house is housing. How's being a homeowner? Um, Overall, like wonderful and terrible. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like you're responsible for so many things. And like growing up, like you, you, you now understand your parents, like when things happen, it's like a big deal. And like mm -hmm. I've rented for so long because I just like wasn't sure where I wanted to end up living. And then 
I did end up staying in like Nashville area, Franklin, and Brew is just snoring away. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, Bruno snoring if that's you hear it. Adorable. Um, but it's like things happen and it's your responsibility. Like no one else, your landlord's not gonna fix it. Like your dad's not gonna fix it. Like yeah. you have to do it. And then James is from London. Bless his cotton socks, as they say that. They say that instead of bless your heart. Like, oh, bless your cotton socks. And he has never had grass in his life. And like, I'm just a girl. So I don't know what to do with lawns. Yeah. Like, I don't do that. And so like, we really put that off. And now it's like spring and everyone's lawn and the neighborhood's looking gorgeous. And ours looks like a piece of shit. And you need to do it like mow it and stuff. Yeah, I guess we- I could see him on a mower. We had, we had um, like landscapers during the spring and summer. And then when winter came, we weren't aware that like you had to, you have to keep, keep it up. You keep yeah. it up. We're like, oh, there's no sunshine and grass. So it doesn't matter. And now everyone's lawns are gorgeous and ours are like covered in clovers and have like patches. And we have an HOA, you know, we're in a neighborhood. So like, yeah. we're going to get in trouble, I think. So we I'm had to hire that. someone that was like, came in and gave us like, you know, the, like a stern talking to. And I was like, sir, I'm just a girl. Right. And James was like, I'm from London. I'm just a Brit. I'm just a Brit. I don't know. <laughs> Two of you. I can't. So like that was that's like one of those things where I'm like, dang, it's our responsibility. Ugh. But Taylor didn't tell you? Ta like Taylor's lawn's also not like thriving. <laughs> like, sorry to throw some shade, but like they don't really have an excuse and her lawn's not thriving either. So we both just look busted together. That is so funny. Well, at least your next door neighbor's not mad about it. Yeah, no, th they're not. They're being really nice. So you have to only worry about neighbors on one side because Shannon lives next to her best friend, which is life goals. Yeah, yeah. It is actually the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire universe. And if and if we were ever to move away from each other, I don't know what we do. No, you're really spoiled. Mm -hmm. No, you I can't. am. Do you guys plan to live like next near each other for the rest of your lives you know we want to do the thing everyone talks about where you like have a commune you know you just like get some yep. land build houses far away from each other but still on the same property uh -huh. little little dirt ride tracks like we want to do that but like you know land ain't cheap but down the road no that's goals here as well at yeah. toast hq toast hq we just want to buy dirt that's what we want to do i'm the one you can live without taylor get a ring hit your knee with the ground do what you love and call it work Throw a little money in the plate at church. church. I love that song. Me too. It's a great song. It's Shouts out Jordan Davis. Shouts out Luke Bryan. Yeah, I think it won all the awards too. Like I it, think so. That it deserved. Agreed. You love to see worthy things winning. Mm -hmm. So we have a great show for you today. Obviously, we have the Fast Five. We're going to dip into a little bit of some stories from yesterday because there are some updates. And I also like I need to talk with you about some things that okay. were discussed. Because Coachella Weekend 1 took place. There was a... A good amount of news, and I feel like there's still more to break down. Plus, there's some new news, so we're going to get back into it. New news, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't I, want to go to Coachella this year? Well, I... No, I didn't. Every uh. day this week, I'm going to ask every guest co-host why they didn't go to Coachella, what their thoughts are on Coachella, okay, and how many times they've been to Coachella. I've been to Coachella twice. Once, um, I had like the worst luck ever with travel and like all our flights I canceled for like three days. We got stuck in Chicago. We went there the last day. So like that was fun. But I think it was just so fun because we finally made it. We got to go to one day and we were only there for one day. What year was it? 2019. Oh, I wasn't there that and year. And then I was I, there that year. You were. Who was performing? Ariana Grande? Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. what it was? 2019? Ariana Grande? Yeah. Yeah. It was it was fun. It was really fun. And then we got there on Sunday. You didn't see me. We were at Coachella. We no, I know, but like, you know, like Revolve. It gets small. I wasn't I wasn't at Revolve Fest or anything like that. I didn't have any like, you know, didn't didn't have any clout. Just went as a guest, as a just a bought tickets to Coachella. That's why it was also so devastating. I spent so much money. Yeah. And like, you know, I wasn't going there for free and we missed all the days except for Sunday. Got it. I think we probably left on Sunday. You did so you didn't see Ariana perform? I don't know. I don't have a memory of her performing. Then you didn't see her. You remember everything. You're an elephant. You know, Claudia, she like loves to skip town as soon as she can. Yeah. Wake up Sunday morning. We're out of here. But they usually put the like biggest artists on Sunday so that yeah. people don't do that. Actually, I don't think we did that because we drove to L.A. Mm. We were L.A. swirlies. And then we went to Vegas. You're crazy. ACM. It's crazy what we you used to do. You went to Coachella and then Vegas. I was just about to compare Coachella to Vegas and be like, you really only need to be there for two days. Yeah. And then that was also the weekend of like Game of Thrones, like final episode like a second to last episode so we were like trying to watch game of thrones like in the car avoiding spoilers wow. on the way to la what yeah. a trying time for all and of I you and i made claudia and i get separate hotel rooms because i was just like i think i'm gonna need space and <gasps> in hindsight like that was weird that is really and, you know, weird she hates being in a hotel room by herself that is really weird i don't like being in a hotel room by myself i just i thought we were gonna have like a chaotic like 
Coachella and then LA we would have like our own rooms and then we, in Vegas we shared a room again I just thought I would like need a break not from her but just like to be my myself and in hindsight I'm sorry Claudia we it, should have shared a room that time at the Montreon yeah should have. it's giving mean sister mean big sister <laughs> <laughs> it's giving like bully meanwhile Claudia's in her room like quivering <laughs> yeah and you're just like sitting there like mm, could have could have not whatever that is so funny so yeah good times good times I, to say I went to Coachella one other time was it Two years ago, last year? Yes, last recently, year? I remember. The looks were looking. Yeah, I did that. Wore, you know, like ashless chaps, did the whole thing. It's, I, am I allowed to say I took a drug on the toast or do we have to crop this out? No, you could take a drug. Yeah, I took a drug and I didn't, you know, I'm I'm the kind of person that shouldn't take drugs because like I don't like to not be in control, but mm -hmm. I insist on trying every drug just at least once or twice. And then I have to tell myself like, you took the drug, you want to be on the drug, you like the drug, but like, I don't like the drug. Yeah. And so I just like, it was just terrible. I got like locked in a porta potty. It was, it was traumatizing. Damn. Yeah, I know. So are you done with, are your Coachella days over? Could you see yourself going back? I like, I did stagecoach with Claude last year and that was so much fun with Claude and Margot and him and everyone was, it was so much fun. But the, the only reason I found it was more fun was because we, we really like, just splurged on that driver. And I don't like the process of getting to Coachella or mm -hmm. Stagecoach. Like it is a whole dusty, like incredibly long. You're wearing boots. Like I, I now know to wear comfortable shoes, but Blisterville. like- It's just not, that part is so just not fun for me. And it kind of like puts a damper on the experience. So um, for those reasons, I liked Stagecoach last year because we had a driver that like pulled us right up to like the spot that you kind of just like boom, walked right into the festival. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm only pulled to Coachella if there was a lineup that I like couldn't deny. You know, this mm -hmm. year I was like, I don't care about this lineup or whatever. Aside from country music, who do you like? Oh, I like, a, I'm like a big rap girly. Love, love, love hip hop and rap. Okay. So if there was a headliner there for you, you yeah, would Yeah, I would go. Okay. Yeah. So maybe like we'll see TBD and like the outfits are always fun. But then again, it is one of those things where like you just feel like you have to get the coolest outfits. I did see though, Coachella fashion this year, I saw a lot of people doing like anti-Coachella looks. Like more pared down. Not even, like just straight up like black t-shirt shorts and like like tennis shoes. Like like girls straight up being like, I am not, like like famous people, like yeah. Kendall Jenner, like Hailey B. I saw them in like outfits that you were just like, wait, what? Like this is not like giving Coachella, but then of course you're like, oh my God, like is well, it- Now giving Coachella like means something different. Right, I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, maybe if it got, it just gets really like kind of like, I keep using the word daunting, but like knowing that you have to like get all the fits and then like compare yourself to other people in the fits or God forbid have the same fit as someone else. And then when you mix in all of the like revolve fest, all of this sounds like a like privileged little biatch, but like it's just like, it's a, it's a lot of like girl stuff that you're like, ah. It's like dog eat dog out there. It's dog eat dog world. Yeah. And like who has the most rhinestones on their eyelids? I don't know. I've got hooded eyes. I can't compete. Got it. Mm. But you can. I you do. Can. And you do. Okay, well, let's get into the stories because we're going to talk a bit about some more Coachella news. So without further ado, here are the fast five stories that you need to know. Hit me. Well, before I hit you, today's stories, I have to let you know, are brought to you by Skims. You guys, we absolutely love and adore Skims here at The Toast. My cotton jersey t-shirt is a wardrobe staple for me. I reach for it almost every day and the fit is so perfect because it snatches me right at the waist, which you know, mama needs. I've washed it a million times and it has held its shape. It fits like a dream. I cannot stop wearing it. Also, their soft, smoothing t-shirt is the most flattering t-shirt I've ever worn. I mean, seriously, everything from Skims is amazing. I've recently also gotten into their boyfriend t-shirt, which is like an oversized Luke that, you know how I love an oversized Luke boyfriend t-shirt. It is what it sounds like. So we love Skims at the Toast for all of your basic essential needs skims shop the skims t-shirt shop at skims.com now available in sizes xxs to 4x haven't yet be sure to let them know we sent you after you place your order select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows yeah that would always be great because we love skims and we love them as a sponsor so again we love the cotton jersey tees the boyfriend tees i love a light heather gray tee that's what i have in the boyfriend tee and it's just like super cute it's giving gym Today's episode is also brought to you by Athena Club. So say goodbye to the cheap razor era. You guys, we're done using cheap razors that are just gonna keep nicking at our legs. We're gonna get 
the razors that our body deserves. So Athena Club is a razor kit. It's an absolute steal at just $10. But don't let the price fool you. This razor packs a serious punch. It comes with beautifully made ergonomic handle and two super sharp razor heads that deliver an incredibly smooth shave every time. The quality of the razor and the quality of the shave are amazing. The Athena Club razor glides effortlessly thanks to those thanks to those five precision engineered blades. The bra- blades are perfectly spaced out to let hair pass through with each stroke and you'll experience less irritation which is always a win. So the blade on my old razor like used to get goopy and loopy, but the water activated serum on Athena Club's razors are amazing and there's just enough of it to soothe your body while shaving, but it doesn't get gunk on the blade. Ready to upgrade your shaving experience? Switch to the best razor on the market and show your skin you care with Athena Club. Head over to athenaclub.com to try their award-winning razor and body products and get 20% off your purchase with code TOAST at checkout. You can also find Athena Club razors at your local Target stores. Trust me, you won't look back. Happy shaving. Today's episode is also brought to you by Skylight Frames. As Mother's Day approaches, you've probably been thinking about what to get your mother, your grandmother, and a Skylight Frame is the perfect gift every single time. So the way that it works is it looks like a picture frame, and then each frame comes with a email address and you send pictures from your phone from your computer to this email address and they populate in the frame it's a digital frame and it has rotating photos all the photos that you send to this frame so that people can keep up with your family if there's someone who lives across the country and you can just send them photos instead of sending them to their text message which is fun and nice all of a sudden they're on their picture frame in their kitchen and that's just such an exciting way to see how the kids are growing to see how you are looking it is really a great and super thoughtful gift. The Skylight Frame is a touch screen photo frame that your whole family can upload photos to and they appear in seconds. You get to share your favorite moments with the people that matter to you most. The perfect gift for mom and grandma, especially this Mother's Day, you know, it's just sneaking up on you. So get that order in. As a special limited time offer for our listeners, get 15% off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash toast. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash toast. Mother's Day is coming right up. So order today to get 15% off your purchase at skylightframe.com slash toast. Everyone I've gotten a Skylight Frame for loves it so much. It's a never flop gift. So especially this time of year, gifting season, make it a Skylight Frame. I love a Skylight Frame. Got one for my grandma. I love it. Our first story is some Taylor Swift ex Coachella news. We talked about yesterday how she was with Travis at Coachella in the podcast hat. He's picking her up. She's taking pictures with Teresa Judice. Like it was a lot. Daughters. Then some hysterical news came out. So Taylor Swift went to the Neon Carnival after party on Saturday night at Coachella. And a video has emerged of her jamming out to the DJ set. The DJ being DJ James Kennedy. Let that sink in. And in the video, she's listening to a, a remix of her own song, Cruel Summer. And it sounds like the normal song. And then all of a sudden, like, the beat, like, starts, like, <laughs> fricka fricka And she's a bit taken aback. I mean, it's hard to know what she's thinking. But based on the video and also the song itself, like, it wasn't my personal favorite remix. Yeah. I mean, first of all, the, like, Bravo crossover between Taylor Swift right now is just, like, it's really doing something special to my heart. Just like knowing that it was James Kennedy after she was just seen with Teresa is just like really I just love that. And I love James and he really deserves to have Taylor Swift like listen to a James Kennedy original remix of his song. Oh, I couldn't agree less. Oh, you don't like him? No, I just don't think he his DJing deserves Taylor Swift. She she was dated Calvin Harris for so long. She's probably like, what the f- is this? No, I think that's what makes it so iconic. And you just know like he's never gonna let this go like, ever we'll be hearing about it on the next season like taylor swift listen 100%. to my song percent and i love that for him i have a soft spot in my heart for him okay and his djing career oh for his career as well we once went to see dj james kennedy perform at a club in the city it was margo's birthday so we like got a table at a club and he was the performer okay and we had a ball oh really yeah yeah but you guys the bar is low for y'all yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you guys if you guys have music and the swirlies together you're having a ball it's really true but the, i have to say like the music was pretty good i'm just a little bummed that this remix like there's that remix going around of love story yeah yeah that yeah. she loves there, and danced to was it in gonna vegas. Say, there's a video of her in vegas dancing to that and the what he did to her song cruel summer like it was not that he pressed like a button on a thing it was like wait 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 wait, wait, wait. like it wasn't it wasn't like a thoughtful remix. It wasn't you know what I mean? thoughtful. That's I agree. 
I maybe he knew Taylor was there. He wanted to like play her song. He didn't have something prepared, right? So he just hit the frick a frick a button. He just, he just hit the frick a frick a button. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, her face. I don't think you were like. It's hard to see what she's thinking, but like, I think it's easy. It's clear to see what she was thinking. Like, I don't think she was obsessed. No, she she wasn't obsessed. Yeah, but I hope that doesn't let it doesn't affect James and his confidence. I think nothing could affect him and his confidence literally ever literally i can't ever. i can't wait to see how they talk about it on uh vanderpump because for sure they'll like color correct the footage and like because it's like a really blurry video yeah. footage of her and they'll somehow like make it yeah really it's good hysterical so what did you think of taylor and travis at coachella i mean like i just think it's iconic normies. i think it's so cool that she's just like out and about like she we saw her hidden for so long and i'm sure you guys talk about this all the time on the toast but like she is just like living her unscared truth like yeah. and he is just the way he's so like handsy with her he's always like picking her up and grabbing her he just is like your quintessential like uh, uh, football dude and like it's just really funny to see this like like taylor swift in that world with him and she obviously like is obsessed with it you know yeah. what i mean and i just think going to Coachella is giving us all everything that we they're doing it for us you know what I mean they didn't go to Coachella because they wanted to listen to music they were like everyone will love that we're at Coachella yeah and that's really sweet of them to do for us but do you think it's near impossible especially at a place like Coachella where everyone has their phones there's no semblance of privacy even like the VIP pit is in the middle of the right. concert like everybody's looking at you like how do you function how do you even like I'm sure at a certain point you just have to like put it all out of your head but like how can you even actually do that I think she's probably so used to it. You know what I mean? They don't do anything. She can't go out without people knowing who she is. So like... You don't think every move she makes, she's just like aware that people are watching and that like it's going to be... She probably just exists like that now. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's probably just like existing. Doesn't that affect your ability to like be real human though? If probably, but she stopped being a real human a long time ago. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure she just like is... I, I would, as a celebrity, be just so stressed out about the lip reading of it all now. Yeah. That would just, like, really put a damper on my parade, I think. I think for me, I would be stressed out. Like, if I'm not actively talking or actively smiling, like, I might look angry or miz. When I'm yeah. not, I'm just, like, a quiet, pensive person. I feel like I would get in my head about, like, what my face looks like when I'm not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. So you'd always be needing to do something. Maybe that's why I'm always talking. Yeah. I look kind of busted when I'm not like talking or just. I'm just like, yeah, I'm always just like looking out the window, like nothing, like nothing going much going on. I'm not angry, but I might look angry. Right. And you'd be worried I'm about saying. that. Yeah. But then you could just be like the pensive cool girl that's always got like a chip on her shoulder. You know, but then they say like, that's always how I feel like JLo and Ben Affleck are always caught out like that, like looking miserable. Like they're in a fight or something. But yeah. I don't think that they, I think they are very happy together and they're not always fighting. Well, he's like brought it up now. I think he's addressed it and said yeah. like this, the, he did like a bit like on SNL or a Duncan commercial or something where he was like, this is my face. He's like, I'm ecstatic right now. Like he, like that's, yeah. he made fun of himself. Yeah. He's like, sorry, this is what I look like. When we see those pics, like it's not a red flag to me. I'm like, they're just like being normal people. Yeah, they're just existing. Existing. That's like when Bradley Cooper and Irina Shayk went to Wimbledon. Have you seen those pictures? And they seriously look like they're in a fight. And they actually might be in a fight and they didn't work out. So like they probably were fighting. But like Claudia and I always say, normalize fighting in public. Like Yeah, yeah. Like just... fight. Like no, like fight with your everyone. Like, you're allowed to be mad sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. Actually I I've yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I might just pick a fight with James just to like kind of test just it out. Just to normalize it. Just, to, just so people can like feel more comfortable around us. Oh, like, maybe I shouldn't though. Not a screaming match, but like some, you're not happy all the time. You're not happy all the time. Yeah. I'm not happy right now with my face. Right. Maybe I'll just pick a fight with him about that. Yeah. But it, in no way is it his fault. No. Oh yeah, you're right. And like now that I could TBD have shingles, like maybe he's going to be like, you just can't be near me. Oh, damn. It is really contagious if it is shingles. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like everyone says if you have shingles, like you could give someone chicken pox, but if they already had chicken pox, you can give them shingles. And if it's the same thing, then why don't we just keep calling them chicken pox? Agreed. It's like adult chicken pox. So chicken pox. So chicken pox. And then you just get like the mm. the icky, scratchy. It's icky, scratchy sores. And is it worse? Is, is chicken pox worse for adults? Is that why it shingles? Yes. Chicken pox is way worse for adults. Sorry, <laughs> bringing it back to me. Bring it back to I mean, the shingles. How can you not? <laughs> Sitting here like might have shingles. How are we not talking about it? When you were doing your ads, I was looking at myself on my camera as one does. And I was like, Jesus, that is just. It's really like from where I'm sitting, it's not so bad. Okay. It's not so bad. All right. And you otherwise like look great. Thank you. Okay. Seriously. Okay. 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 I'll get out of my head. Our next story is an exciting news update from one of my favorite developing stories this year. 
I don't think you're going to guess what it is, but it's Meghan Markle's lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard. It has debuted its first product. So have you heard she's launching a lifestyle brand? No, but it's giving She by Sheree. It's giving, well, we keep saying it's giving like Joanna Gaines Magnolia, Magnolia oh, Table. Oh, oh, So it's called American Riviera Orchard and it's going to be like, it's a lifestyle brand. It's going to be a cooking show. It's going to be like consumer goods. It's going to be everything. By the way, bit of a mouthful. Yeah. America Riviera Orchard. So the name is not my favorite. That's like, like who reads it that? It's just like long, like America Riviera Orchard. And they're, we said, a very global couple. Right. America. Just really putting him again, right ostracized from the old Brits. Right, right. Maybe they're trying to like double down on American things, but I don't think that they that they should or that they need to. Like hmm. they're so global that use that. Yeah, they're also not giving like the most patriotic couple. So they shouldn't really need to put America in the name. Right, right. I totally, I, like the place where they live is called the American Riviera, but like, okay. Oh, okay. It's, no, but like, so it's, it's, you're not the mayor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I don't know. Okay, so what's so it's it's got a launch date. So their first product has debuted and it's rustic jars of fresh jam. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's selling jam. So her friends flock to social media on Monday to share photos of the fruit preserves stamped with the company's name and logo wrapped in decorative neutral cloth and string bow. So like this was the PR gifting. She's selling jam. Okay. It was 50, 50 jars. Do we know the price of a jar of rustic jam? No, I don't even think like the people can buy it yet, but like she's getting people interested and excited. Do we know the difference in regular jam and rustic jam? Probably like preservatives and things. Like also the brand is giving homesteading a bit. I feel like she is kind of- Giving trout wife. It's capitalizing like on this trend of, of back to our roots, which I think is smart because there's a lot of interest in that right, right now. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, there so is. she's making her own jam. Yeah, she's just, well, she's not making the jam, but she's thinking that people might want some rustic jam. Yeah, I love a good jam. I'm obsessed with jam, personally. And I love a honey, too. Love honey as well. I actually, one could say I might love jams and jellies too much. I have so many in my house. Like, I, I, jam and bread is just like the best. I feel like that's probably where you and James's Venn diagram crosses over, like as a British thing. Like, I feel like they like jam. They do. They do love jams and like, um, what's that thing they, ha they have? Uh, it's not an English muffin. It's a... Biscuit. No. Nope. Crumpet. Crumpet. Love a crumpet. You and James are kind of like Megan and Harry. Has anyone pointed this out? No. No. Mostly just because you're American and he's British, but I think that's enough. But I think the red and hair is also... Red hair yeah, in, the, in the mix. Coming in too. Um, yeah. And then like I stole him from London and was like, we'll live and here now. Yeah. 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 Except for our families love us. <laughs> There's no turn. There's no. There's no drama. No drums yet. Yet. So do you as like a? He does have a brother named William. As a transcontinental couple as well, do you feel simpatico with Meghan and Harry? Have no. you ever even thought about the similarities? No, I've never really felt close to them. I could see you selling your jam wares. You know You're what? You're kind of a lifestyle brand. Maybe I could go into that. Maybe I could be her competitor. She needs a competitor. Maybe it would even help both of us if she had someone kind of just like edging in on her jam sphere. Yeah. Just to shake things up. Just to shake things up. Wow, you guys are the same. Cool. Yeah. You guys are like the influencer, so Megan and Harry. Literally twins. <laughs> <laughs> literally twins. We're twins. Well, overall, I'm here for ARO and... I look forward to seeing what it does and what she does. It is giving, like you said, Magnolia. Yeah, like I think she's gonna have her cooking show and then she'll sell the pots and pans mm -hmm, and then she'll mm -hmm. sell the jams and say like, I made these things. Is, is she super popular in America? That's a loaded question. She's not super popular. She's not popular over there. Over there. So. That I know to be true. It's hard to know because I feel like American media really likes them and likes her. And yeah. I think they're all very excited by the fact that like, you know, these are royals who will sit down and give an interview on the red carpet. Like it's crazy. So it is crazy. But the American people, I don't know what the consensus is. Right, right. It is it is crazy because like we loved to be a part of it. Like when we had an American go over there and marry him, yeah. we were like, oh my God, stop. We have the end. We're, we're in. Yeah. We love it. And then like they brought them back here they brought themselves back here and we're like oh no but now it's not now you're just back in america go back over there and we want to be a part of it there like yeah. i feel like that might be like where people stand and i think also people americans are put off by the 
airing of the dirty laundry. Yeah, I could see that. I think, you know, most people, like our family people, they would never do that. I think I right. think that's turned a lot of people off. Fair, fair enough to say, yeah, yeah, I could see that. And then also, I feel like, you know, until they, they've tried their hand at a lot of things that haven't been so successful. So many things. And it's giving grift. And people are like, starting to like smell that however i think this one but the that, jams are gonna do it but for you. i think aro which is also what's crazy is she used to have a lifestyle blog when she was on suits before she met harry she had a blog called the tig for it stood for the it girl and it was just like oh. girly lifestyle tings okay and this is kind of going back to that i feel like she can really like she could have success with this and this could be the thing but i i wonder if it's like too late because you know, there was the podcast, there was the documentary, there right. was the book. She's got the look for what she's going for. Yeah. Like I would buy into it. Like had I not known anything else about her, if I saw her, she's, it's giving Joanna Gaines in the sense that like I would, she just looks like so naturally beautiful and rustic. And, and like, I could see her like at home with her kids and yeah. they, have the ch they have chickens. Oh, uh, well, who doesn't? Me. Yeah, not. I don't think, I recently learned that I can't have chickens. Um. Of, in my county of course you can't what do you mean people have backyard chickens all the time but yeah you would live in like a area that i would assume like like in my hoa they're like no chickens they're, they say no chickens they, i feel like you firm. and taylor would have had a joint coop if you we could. would we would have had a coup and a coup you need a coup a, a coup, coup. Yeah. but it's but it yeah it's like a lot of i think people are having to implement more strictly no chickens yeah it's like it's never been an issue <laughs> it's like yeah you can't have chickens you can't have a crocodile yeah, everyone's like run it back we need to put it in bold at the top no <laughs> chickens allowed in the neighborhood that is so funny but do you have the chicken itch i've got the itch for chickens yeah me too um just you know the price of eggs these days blimey is staggering. The, staggering the price to make a boot we actually we were grocery shopping yesterday and we saw uh eggs and we totally got sold on them even though i eventually saw they were from wisconsin lol but the the eggs are in like a clear container and they're all different colored eggs which is what eggs look like when you get them fresh from the farm right but like i literally think they've all been painted to look like that but they got me i finally i haven't bought different eggs in like two years not since bobby from Flav said he said to get those like organic pasture raised ones yeah and i bought these ones i feel like a fool and we both looked at each other in the supermarket and we're like they're probably 100 percent getting us on the marketing but we were it like literally but we should like do it. a box of eggs from down the road it did it did but i saw it today i couldn't find where the farm was i saw it was wisconsin like i'm a fucking fool <laughs> great <laughs> just up the road little i have to take a picture you guys it's actually cra like crazy what they did yeah and we both there's we like one green one two white two brown yellow yeah not not none beside each other all like staggered yeah they, they got us down the road from wisconsin just down the road from wisconsin so jam jam I'm open to jam. I don't need jam right now in my life. I'm I'm gonna say I'm a little bit shocked that this is what she led with. This was her opening like gusto. This is her walkout song. I just rustic the, jam. I hope it's the beginning of something big. Like I hope the jam drops. Next week, like a trailer for the cooking show drops. Then the show drops and then, you know, a Le Creuset style Dutch mm. oven. Yeah. I keep just, on dropping. Even her PR packages was kind of just giving like bridesmaid proposal yeah it was like actually i'm only saying that because i was getting married in italy so i put lemons in mine but like it's yeah hmm. and who are the friends who got them no one that i like no no you know like just like her her pals so brew are you switching sides oh brew goodbye miss you love you <laughs> he's so funny he needed to go snore in peace okay so aro debut's its first product and we'll keep you posted our next story, a little Beverly Hills news. Crystal Kong Minkoff is leaving Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after three seasons. Okay. So Crystal Kong Minkoff has announced that she is leaving Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after three consecutive seasons, calling her exit bittersweet, she said on Instagram. Hi, so I just wanted to share the news that I will not be coming back to film season 14 of Real Housewives. It's so bittersweet. Never did I think I would have been asked to do the show in a million years, let alone film it for three seasons. Every single year I was asked back, it was a blessing, it was an honor, and now her time has come do you think it was her decision or theirs i think it was theirs i yeah. wouldn't be i don't think it was hers because like why not do another season it's right. not like her life was negatively impacted by the show at all if anything it was like a fun thing for her to do but i think those two things go hand in hand because she wasn't the most interesting which is why her life wasn't really affected by it yeah yeah exactly but because she wasn't the most interesting like her time was up she it's was taking up space so crazy that like the 
producers can just decide someone's time stuff. Like you see, we always see these housewives like, but then we see ones that are like super interesting that are like, I was not asked to come back this yeah. season. And it's like, oh, and it's like really tumultuous and crazy. But yeah, I agree. I think this was just like a, her time had come. Like they gave it three seasons. This was what, you know, she's saying, this is what I have for the show. Take yeah. it or leave it. And they said no thanks. And I think she's not coming back and Marie's not coming back. I think we'll get some new cast members. Beverly Hills like isn't in a bad place so it's not like they need a major shakeup. True. But she could have had an affair for us. Yeah, or like like just start a major friend drama. Right. But that's just something. like not her style. I agree and she went out with her head held high. She really did. I think this is a good run. She's like I, I can't even recall like my overall thoughts on her because I feel like sometimes I was so with her and sometimes I was so not. Yeah, I just felt indifferent. Yeah. It isn't love, it isn't hate just indifference yeah but I, I think that ultimately is a good way to go because Agreed. she can just like go back to her life and her things and her things she's like maybe she's gonna start a jam company she needs time she could start a jam company she i could. think everyone could start a jam company. I, I think actually literally anyone could start a jam yeah, you company just like boil berries yeah and you add sugar put it in a jar burlap string lemons in a pr package shoot it off Wait, I kind of sound like a Megan hater. Sorry. No, you kind of sound like hater. you could make your own jams like Megan because you're Megan. Yeah. Well, we. I am her. She is we. we. I wonder if she's ever had shingles. Or he was what if you just called Megan up? Yeah. <laughs> and you just talked to her. Um, yeah. Could you use anyone's advice, really? I don't know. I just, I, I mean, I'm not really a hater of her. No. But it feels, it feels just like easy to do. Yeah. yeah no. And it's like, and we need more. Like we need more from more. ARO. This is like a very, very soft launch and it yeah. needs to be bigger and better. Like it needs to be like gangbusters, honestly. And that's what Beverly Hills needed. They just needed more. So. Yeah. TB, it will be exciting to see who they cast. That is always fun. But goodbye, Crystal. Bye. It was nice getting to know you. It was. Our next story is some very exciting news that is brought to you by Saks.com. Turdy and I have decided that we are saying yes to warm weather this year and that means we are stepping up our wardrobes with the help of Saks.com. Everybody knows Saks.com is the place to shop. Saks.com is making it easy for us to get a jump into spring and summer fashion trends as we approach the warmer seasons. Whether you're looking for new boots for Stagecoach, beachwear for St. Bart's, or new active wear for a 5K you're training for, they've got it all at Saks.com. Saks.com is super fun and easy to shop with brands that we love like Staud, Lueve, Favorite Daughter. Saks also does a great job of finding up and coming designers so you can hop onto new trends before everyone else. For the Eras Tour, Turdy was able to get her hands on the Danielle Guizio skirt before everyone else hopped on that trend thanks to Saks.com. With different curated shops like Spring Wedding Guest, It Girls Closet, Designer Shop, Date Night, Saks.com makes it easy for you to find exactly what you're looking for. You can find anything from a cozy vibe to a more elevated look at Saks.com. Discover new ways to shop for everything every day at Saks.com. Love shopping at Saks.com. They legit have everything for every style, every vibe, every occasion, Saks.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by The Farmer's Dog. So The Farmer's Dog was founded by two dog lovers who decided to reimagine pet food from the ground up. In the five years since they delivered their first meal, the response has been incredible. They hear stories every day about dogs of all ages, breeds, and lifestyles that have seen real benefits from their coats and skin, energy levels, and breath. Food can truly be the best medicine and the farmer's dog aspires to grow into the world's leading pet health and wellness brand. And they can't do that without dog lovers like us. So of course, Streisand decided to hop off my lap right before he was set to get to work on the farmer's dog ads. But Streisand loves farmer's dog. Oh my gosh, he can't believe when I give him farmer's dog, he like cannot believe that he's getting to eat real food after like how much really gross ass kibble he ate. Um, this new year, the easiest, healthiest habit is one to start for your dog. The farmer's dog makes feeding real healthy dog food easy and convenient. And your dog will absolutely love it. Like the way that they want to eat all your human food. Now they get their own with farmer's dog. It's it's seriously brilliant. And when you think about how kibble is made and what goes into it and like historically why kibble was made, it's pretty freaking nasty. So a fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits for your pups from healthier coat and skin to better breath, even easier digestion and smaller, better poops. A healthy diet isn't just important for humans. It's important for our furry friends too. So get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash toast. Plus you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash toast to get 50% off. That's farmersdog.com slash toast. Brew tested, brew approved. Right, Brew? Oof. Right. Rough. That was 
That's Nicole. an endorsement. That's an endorsement. Okay, our next story is some exciting Bebe news from a great couple that is just like great. I love when two people from different worlds get together, like you and James and Harry Ooh. and Meghan. <laughs> just like us. Logan Paul is expecting his first baby with right. his fiance Nina Agdal. So Logan Paul shared a few photos on Instagram announcing that he and his model fiance Nina Agdal are expecting their first baby together. They posed in front of some cherry blossom trees and a flower garden kissing while holding up photos of their sonogram and it was cute the caption was like new paul next fall another That's paul cute. coming this fall oh yeah, oh yeah it rhymed yeah well yeah i love that i thought it was cute a poet i didn't even know it what's also cute is they're a very like cool interesting couple and the announcement is giving regular oh my god couldn't agree more i was gonna say it's giving regular 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 i love regular regular and some things, it's just like, yeah, here's the sonogram. We're having a baby. Like, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There you go. There the, you go. the cherry blossoms were a nice touch, though. Yeah, I didn't notice the cherry blossoms, but let me see the pic. I oh, love a cherry oh, blossom. Okay, well, you do. I do. You I, do. Yeah, I do, we don't get them down here. Where are they, Garot? Where, where are there, they? At? I don't know DC. where this picture was taken, but there are in New York, in DC. DC. Yeah, that's like Potomac. That's their right emblem. right okay i mean i think this is cute what do you think about the paul brothers like settling down oh i love i love that for them i'm a big paul brother fan really yeah i watch unassumingly unassumingly i watch untold jake paul on netflix okay maybe i need to watch it you should watch it i found it to be very interesting okay like and, and it would like painted him in a better light yeah and it's about his boxing journey oh right right oh yeah I got freaking and his brother's in it a lot and it's a lot about like their history and as youtubers and i don't know like the ins and outs of their careers because it's not like i've like followed their videos right. and stuff but so seeing it all at a glance i really enjoyed the the it's a documentary i guess because you know they did untold manti teo oh yeah did you it watch that one a whole series no i didn't but i remember the untold series so he got an untold okay interesting i need to yeah i need to watch that then yeah i'm happy for him i feel like they do a lot of press like they're always like well because he has a podcast yes impulsible impossible impulsive impulse impulsive impulsive right. yeah. that's the one and so yeah th i feel like i know a lot about them because they they share they share their shares and i like that about them that i like feel like i know a ton yeah and i like i think these two are such a cute couple having babies you love to see it yeah i like to see that too yeah interesting so mazel tov mazel to the tov. paul agdals our fifth and final story is exciting book movie news and exciting redhead news so i'm really glad to talk about it with you okay i don't like you i don't like you Chad and i have been saying that all day, <laughs> all day. <laughs> so our fifth and final story it ends with us blake lively is starring in colleen hoover adaptation it ends with us has gotten a release date the movie that is so highly anticipated for so many reasons Ugh. is coming out on august 9th so initially it was set to be released february 9th but then was pushed back to june however it will now be released in august honestly i didn't even realize it was pushed back that feels kind of soon they pushed it back because of all the backlash they got i thought you're lying no, no, no. but also strike tings oh strike tings i i thought i mean i'll literally believe anything i read but like i thought i saw a headline at one point that said that um colleen hoover was like taking into account the like fan backlash. fan backlash so i don't think that she should even though i saw the pictures and i was not excited by them like i think that these choices had already been made you can't let the fans like dictate your artistic vision like she was okay with what she saw she liked it she wrote the book like Do i you think, think she was okay with it she had to be but like i guess like she, I don't, put, she did put out a statement saying like blake lively is a dream casting for her because for me like the issues start with the blake lively casting like i thought that was the wrong choice she addressed it she addressed it well okay so what'd you say sorry she just said like it's a dream to have blake be in this role like couldn't have dreamed up a better yeah but i feel like when you do think of like rom-com leading lady you do think of blake lively but for this book it's not a rom-com though to me like well, like a Rome, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess. No, you're right. You're right. She, like whenever we do redheads, we read books and then we cast them like for a movie. And we like Blake Lively is an obvious choice. Of course, you want her as your girly. Sure. But not here. Like I do think here it was the wrong choice. I do think also the author doesn't have like full say in these things. Right. But I don't think she was mad about Blake Lively. Like, really, could you get a more exciting cast? That's the thing. It's really exciting because she's just such a big deal. But like. I also just stand in solidarity with the redheads who could have been a perfect casting redhead opera. missed out on the job. Yeah, like a redhead was meant for the job and didn't get the job and Blake Lively dyed her hair red and crimped it in a really horrible way. And I don't think she looks like the character. No, it's like kind of offensive to redheads, I, I agree. would say. 
I can think of a number of redheads, and we all played this game. Who should it be? Right, of course, right, Shannon right. Ford. Of course, Sophia Lacourt. Of course, Madeline Petch. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. And so it comes out in August. I wasn't I wasn't perturbed about the male choices. Yeah, because like, who cares about that? Right. I also like, I felt like such a hater. I didn't want to be a hater. I talked about it on my podcast. Too. Like, I didn't want to be a hater to, to Blake Lively because I fucking love Blake Lively. Right. It's like, it's making us say negative things about Blake Lively. And I didn't who's want a darling to. girl. Agreed. But she shouldn't be in this movie. Even just like on a redhead level, age level. She, Lily is younger. Yeah. Yeah. Like obsessed with Blake Lively, like making the change into like older roles. And by older, I just mean like playing a mom who has like kids that because she's a age. mom who has kids exactly like what was the movie um with uh anna kendrick that she did you know the one i know the everyone's one. screaming it right now that's watching this yeah they the, uh shoot like a fatal affair something like yeah. that but not that anna kendrick a simple favor a simple favor okay that's like the same thing. obsessed with her and that film obsessed with her and obviously so many films i but never it, saw that oh you should watch it it's so good it is it's so good yeah and it's like she's she wasn't pretending to be like a young hot 22 year old she was acting as a like hot 38 year old and like I, it was giving yes it was the best movie she looked so hot and like why is she now going back and pretending to be a 19 year old yeah yeah so I'm, I will be seeing this movie because I really like the book and now like I'm just so interested in what August is soon and August is soon and are, so we have a date what are they gonna do theaters prime what are they up to theaters theaters okay so exciting and you had read the book I read the book yep and you liked Both. it a la turdy you know you know I only became a reader because of you guys I didn't read I only li well not no, that you listen to audiobooks that counts it totally counts but like I got a Kindle recently because of you guys and I'm like obsessed like oh I love that for you my favorite one of my favorite Jan facts in addition to like the productivity and everything is that you like listen and have technically read like all the like the Alex Cross yeah. it's like you read like James Patterson and like James Dean Patterson Koontz, like it actually really bothers me when you say that there shouldn't be male writers like I'm obsessed no, like Shannon's keeping them in business I'm like I read how many books are there 35 on the Alex Cross 30, 36 and I thought I would never get through them all because I started they came out in like 1994 or something and maybe even before that is that I, your favorite genre like thriller but not in the traditional sense no because now that my eyes have been open to like actual good books that you guys tell me about like Colleen Early Huber books. and like you know, all that stuff and like love love a smut like like from the male perspective like any sex scenes were just like very male driven and only big and, and honestly James Patterson didn't write that many sex scenes it was just like very small things and it was all from like the male POV mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I'm not like you know on the edge of my seat like yeah. I don't care what the man feels right <laughs> I don't care about me so like yeah I mean I could I definitely like these other genre better but like alex cross by That's james patterson boy. he's my guy that your boy cross he's my guy he my guy cross and i ran out of the books <laughs> i couldn't believe it i got through 36 of them and i'm like waiting for the next release that is so crazy do you know that james patterson co-wrote a book with dolly parton no called run rose run we read it for the redheads it's Was like it good it's a james patterson style book and it's set in nashville and it's like has country music influences there's a character in there who's like very much like dolly parton really it wasn't bad i think you should read it as like a nashville dolly james Gurley. as a james patterson stan i will yeah he has so many books so i actually started looking into it he co-writes a lot because like how could he not like yeah he comes out with so many books it was, it's actually hard whenever i go to find on kindle or like audiobook when i go to find my alex cross stuff i have to filter oh through God, like 15 stuff. other like novels he's coming out with like the murders why the murdered wives club or like that sounds he has good. like all these like long-standing like Se like series seriouses. yeah but you know alex cross was such a popular um book the first one along came a spider was a movie denzel washington played did you watch it i haven't watched it but my dad said i should because it's like you're obsessed with you're obsessed what other is is alex cross like the only series in that genre that you've read all of them or like yeah i've read others? no other series really other than like i'm reading i'm listening i'm reading a lot of books right now but i'm listening to when i do my makeup i like to listen to either the toast or I'll, if it's not out yet and i'm getting ready early in the morning i'll have an audiobook and right now i have iron flame on and i was just telling you i'm kind of like i'm kind of exhausted from it yeah by the end of the second book like towards the second half of the second book i was just like you know what i'm not gonna read the third whatever it is like i'm just it's not for me and i really like the first one and i think it's a really good the first one i couldn't and, get enough and whenever the show they're making like a show about it and it'll be really popular i just like i think 
I'm not the right demo. Yeah. The demo is it's losing me towards the end too. So yeah, I mean, no, just really Alex Cross is my fixation. John Grisham. John Grisham, no, but like it's so funny. You're so right. This is giving like on your dad's bedside table. No, ser- <laughs> like, Stephen King. Stephen King, I've read a few of his. I okay. like it. Harlan Coben. No. Yeah, like these are the people who are always like on the bestsellers, like, airport books. It That's what you read. Was just going to say your classic, like displayed in the front airport books. Like, <laughs> like when girls come out with like their own books, like you always see them in the airport, like removing a Stephen King book yeah, to like yeah. put theirs. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I've read a, a good bit of Stephen King. That is so I just, I'm so supporting. Funny. That's my favorite fact about you. Male authors. You are. Oh my God. You're undoing all of the work that Claudia is doing to deplatform so them. But I do, I do feel better than everyone else whenever I'm reading my Kindle. Like James will be doing, James is like a very like studious, like thoughtful person. He's never just like scrolling TikTok. He's always doing something like beneficial to him, his health or his like mentality, whatever. And I still like, I look over at him. He could be doing something good. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally so much better than you. Like I'm a scholar. Yeah. What is he doing? I don't know. What like, is James doing? Like, what's he doing? <laughs> what is James doing? Um, I don't know. He'll just be doing something. You know what I mean? Something. But he doesn't read He reads books. books but like if Physical? he's- Physical? physical books of course L- loser um he's like he I, I don't know he could just be doing anything like he could be like looking at his fingernail and I'm like look at him looking at his fingernail while I'm reading right that's like anything yeah he could be doing anything anything and I'm like I'm literally so much better than you yeah and even meanwhile you're reading Colleen <laughs> yeah I'm literally reading that's like the beauty of the Kindle right right I'll never know I remember when 50 shades of gray came out and I was in high school and I like wanted to read it so badly on the airplane and like these old ladies sat beside me and I was like so embarrassed so I was like Ugh. Kindle I'm literally reading about clits <laughs> goo, goo, goo. there's a Kindle for that there's a Kindle for that yeah well I'm glad that we've converted you but I'm sad to take you away from James Patterson and John Grisham like I'll be back Jax okay. I'll be back okay okay I literally ran out there's none left right now I've read them all that is the, seriously the funniest thing ever. <laughs> I actually have read like a couple books of that elk that I've loved that I want to recommend to you if you haven't read already. I would love to. Right now I'm reading on your, per your recommendation, I'm reading Strange Sally Diamond. I'm on yeah. page like seven. It's so. really good. I know that you'll like it because it's like twisted and objectively very good. I was going to have her read By Baby, but I feel like she wanted darker. I wanted darker. I like darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good. Like Pretty Girls by uh, Colleen Hoover, right? Uh, all the pretty girls or pretty girls I don't think so that pretty... book is like stuck with me for like I'm not getting like eight years in the most like twisted dark way but like by I Karen love that. Slaughter it's Karen Slaughter that's who it is sorry it's good oh my gosh add it to the TBR pretty girls by Karen Slaughter and then I went on, on like down a rabbit hole where I was like is that actually her last name because she writes books of that like yeah no it's a great thriller writer book and name. that's like her real last name Slaughter wow crazy right yeah, I'm adding it to my list. And as a reminder, Redheads is the greatest podcast. Always plug. Always plug Redheads because we're Redheads right here. And Obvious. because we're talking about books. And we're women who read. And the Redheads Renaissance. Do you follow the Redheads on Instagram? I will write this second. Oh, maybe I already do, actually. You know what? I feel I, like you do. There's no way you don't. That I would feel be like so crazy. That would be so rude. I just followed them. <laughs> It's okay. We just got good. So okay. you're, like I said, it's got never it. too late to become a redhead. And I, that, I, that stands for you too. Like, it I'm is not never treat too late. Like, differently. Look at me right here. Look, it just happened. Just happened. I Converted. just followed the redheads. Well, thank you so much, Shannon, for joining us and for thank pushing you. through all of your different ailments. Yeah, a lot. So many ailments, medical anomalies just happening here. Thanks for not kicking me out of your home <laughs> and loving me regardless. Yeah, no, I think it's all going to be good. How are you feeling now? How The lip is looking good. Thanks. Um, I'm feeling like I'm a part of a podcast that's like a very equal opportunity, like non-discriminatory place no. to be. It feels like a safe place is what this feels like. It's a safe place with the Thank mingos you. and brew. We aim to please. It all feels good. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Toast. We have a great rest of the week coming up. Tomorrow, my friend Mary Orton is joining me in studio. So Claudia, watch out. <laughs> Shannon, where can everybody follow you and keep up with you? you can as they up- should. It's premium content, you guys. Wow, thank you so much. You can keep up with me and my hematoma at probably Shannon on Instagram. Probably hematoma. Probably hematoma. I'll do a little username switch. It's probably Shannon on Instagram and probably Shannon Ford, I think, on TikTok. TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> Um, And your show can get tickets. Yeah, you can get tickets. The link is in my bio. It is at the T-Pack in Nashville on Saturday, 4 p.m. Get the girlies. Go on a little Nashville girls trip. Who doesn't want to be in Nashville for a girls trip? It's Saturday. No, this is your sign for a Nashville girls trip. That was the last girls trip that we did. We went to Nashville like right before I got pregnant with Harry and it was the best weekend ever. Oh, so much fun. You guys so got to come back now. 
Yeah, we do. Now that we're friends. Now that we're friends. We weren't friends then yet. So thank you to everyone listening. And thank you to Shannon. And thank you to Brew. We love you dearly. And we will see you tomorrow. Love ya. Bye. Bye.